give this a try. So uh, as you've seen with the motion timed assessment with the multiple choice, the time is pretty tight, 10 minutes, 10 questions. It's not a lot of time. So, um, so I'm gonna just be watching my time and uh, uh, so I might be answering some questions without a lot of explanations for that reason. So start and just try to do this in 10 minutes and hopefully not miss anything. All right. Okay, that's the time I gotta watch. Um, most important, okay. Um, as soon as 10 out of space, separate from tether even by a uh, third law, the action reaction force pair, because um, you can push your own arm. Um, no, yeah. You'd, oh wait, so that is correct. Okay. Um, yeah, and the rest, yeah, this should have been the third law, and this should have been inverse. That's second law. Um, property of force below. Um, not necessary. That's kind of the whole deal about Newton's first and second law. Um, this is a Star Wars question, which, you know, it's one of the joke choices. Um, yeah, it is necessary to stop a moving object. Um, and this is a common mistake people sometimes make. It's the other way. Force, net force causes acceleration. Um, Friction force, okay, incorrectly. All right. Um, friction force allows the car to move forward. Yeah, that is right. Without friction force, the wheel will just spin in place. Yeah, it allows the car to turn as well. Otherwise, you'll just go in a straight line. Uh, that is correct. All right, that sounds weird. So, well, so that seems incorrect. Uh, th th that's exactly what would happen without friction. Um, or the force with a backward force, you know, okay. Airplane speeds up along the runway, for the forces uh, should be more, you know, to speed up, acceleration in the forward direction. Um, and the airport for the first. If it's equal to backward the force, then the airplane wouldn't be successfully landing. It'll be crashing into something because it's not stopping. <laughs> Cruise control, constant speed. Yeah, so constant speed, um, no zero acceleration, so zero net force. Oh, this I think this was one of the questions in the, like additional questions in the lab. Um, what is the most accurate description of role of friction and motion? Yeah, this is a, a, can be potentially tricky. Sometimes people want to answer this, and as you've seen above, there are situations where friction causes things to move. And um, the kind of the one line description of friction that will always be right is this one. And if it is a preventing or reducing sliding ends up being negative acceleration then, or you know deceleration, that'll be that. Or um, in case of the wheels turning, um, that's where the car has to move forward so that the surfaces won't slide against each other. Um, Question six. Oh, that's a number of questions. I'm gonna skip it for now. Come back later when I know I have more time. Uh, question seven. Uh, different forces act. Oh, yeah. This is a Newton's third law question. Read it carefully. Uh, take more time than I'm going to do now. Uh, one action reaction force pair is the upward. Okay, that's an external force, so I don't think that's right. Yeah. I mean, they are equal and opposite, but don't go by that. It's question is trying to trick you with that. Uh, downward normal force on elevator and oh, okay, these are action reaction force pairs between the passenger and elevator. Um, and the uh, down x yeah weight is due to earth, so this should be right. And let me just check one more to make sure I didn't. Yeah, these two forces are not related to each other at all. The tension for yeah. Uh, astronauts in orbit around Earth experience weightlessness. Um, oh, well, you know, I think it's okay. Um, um, <laughs> I, I do think I took out all the questions where you have to know the universal law of gravitation to answer correctly. So, um, 
Uh, some people mistakenly choose this. And if you are familiar with the universal law of gravitation, you have more tools to know, recognize that this is incorrect. But I think I've emphasized enough about how in the lecture about how it's the contact force you feel. So with astronauts in orbit, it, it, there's actually quite significant amount of gravitational force on it. So it would be this one. If the only force on them is gravitational force, then there's no contact force on them, like normal force which is how we feel our weight. Um, yeah. So question nine, well, yeah, banked roads. Uh, the reason these turns are banked, um, yeah, again, this is one of those joke answers. <laughs> maybe this, maybe it's not, I don't know. Either way, there's nothing to do with the physics. Um, and uh, in class, yeah, so this is one of those reasonable sounding answers that uh, use jargons that are, for one, uh, we try to use centripetal force, not focal force, so <sighs> might be true, but it's not the main reason we cover in the lecture, it would be this one. And if you draw the free body diagram for the bank to turn, um, the normal force goes that way, and the component of it goes towards the center. Um, and uh, oh yeah, this is a uh, so. By the way, I think uh, the way uh, you've seen me do this in the other video as well. The way this set is put together, the last question will be the tricky one. And I know this one. I think coefficient of kinetic friction. Okay, it's good to know. With the kinetic friction, there's a direct relationship between friction force and normal force. So as I increase the angle, I know I'm decreasing the normal force. Okay. So acceleration increases, but not the gravitational force. So that's not correct. Half wrong is wrong. Uh, friction, okay. Friction force does decrease. Um, coefficient of kinetic, yeah, that seems right. Okay. And, and there might be a version of this question that uses a static friction. Watch out for that. <laughs> you could do, uh, that won't have the same answer. Um, yeah, the magnitude of normal force changes. Uh, yeah. Okay, um, let me go back to the question I skipped, question six. I know, oh, I don't have that much time, maybe two or three minutes. All right, so someone's pushing something across. Uh, she's applying this much force. Ah, so net force of 150 newtons horizontally. So 150 divided by 90. Oh, can I do that in my head? I think I can. Uh, this seems pretty close. 150 divided by 90, that should be right. Okay, so I think that's all the, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna scroll through to make sure I answered all of them again, because uh, if I miss one, it'll be embarrassing. I know I have to jokingly say that, but, um, well, so if I missed any, uh, let me just click on save progress. <laughs> um, um, you know, if I did miss anything, I'll uh, come back and figure out which one I missed. So I think I've uh, seen this uh, last semester too. So this, if you found the motion timed assessment uh, challenging to complete in 10 minutes, this should be a little bit better. Uh, partly because more of the questions you see in this set, they come from uh, physics 10 questions. About half of these are physics 10 questions. So uh, the amount of time you have is more um, comparable with the level of difficulty of the question as opposed to your uh, motion, multiple choice time assessment where uh, even I would struggle to finish in 10 minutes. So let me submit that end and let's hope that I got 10 out of 10. If not, I will, okay, good. <laughs> I don't like to go back in my... All right, so um, I think um, we have enough time to do um, probably one of the free form um, time the assessment questions. Okay, then let me do um, this part too. And that'll be our time. In fact, 10 minutes is probably not enough, but we'll see. Uh, let me first uh, arrange my things so that I'll be ready to work through when the, uh, the 10, lim 10 minute limit is actually more stringent limit than whatever uh, the 20 minute limit, but okay. Let me start. Um, Okay, so uh, this is not the exact the same question as what I've done before. Now, it's a, a related version of the question, but um, since I haven't done this exact one, let me do that. Uh, so, um, 
And so, by the way, I think I explained this in the video. The way the question groups are divided out is the second question will always involve multiple objects so that you have to worry about Newton's third law. I think none of the questions in the first group involves uh, multiple objects, so you could uh, potentially not worry about Newton's third law. So we have um, consider three blocks of um, these masses connected together this way, right? Okay. Um, connecting uh, force top is applied on the block A, so there are three blocks hanging at rest. That feels important to me. Let me just jot down that acceleration is equal to zero. It's one of the given piece of information. Yeah, keep on, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna organize it here and I'll attach it at the end. Okay, so um, yeah, part A is the, to, I wish you could just draw the diagram, but this kind of answer entry doesn't let you. So this is what I would recommend. You should still draw free body diagrams uh, because you will be attaching it anyway. So let me just have free body diagrams. Um, so I have free body diagram of mass A, mass B, and mass C. Just three separate diagrams. And um, all right, let me just uh, draw all the forces on these things. Um, as I say uh, repeatedly, the, there's always always gravity. So let me just start out by noting that there's going to be gravity on these forces. And then I have to, so having identified the only non-contact force, now I have to make sure that I identify all the contact forces. So I have a force applied at the top, so that'll be on A. And this is only going to be on, on A. A. There's no other force on A. It's a, uh, or sorry, there's no other object to which this force is directly applied. Because whatever's applying this force, it's touching A. Now, there is one other force on A that's coming from this string that's attached. So there might be a tension force. Let me call it T1, pulling A downward. And on object B1, well, the same string is attached to this, pulling it upward. So let me draw tension T1 upward on B. And uh, there's this other string that's touching B. So there should be a downward force of T2, tension on the second string. And uh, for this question, I'm pretty sure these tensions will end up being different. So don't use the one and the same label for both of them. Uh, block C, um, there's weight and there's nothing touching it other than this string. So there should be tension T2 here. Um, so that's all the forces. And I deliberately haven't paid the real attention to the length of these arrows, which is fine. Um, so, you know. Don't look at the lengths and say, based on the lengths that automatically one is bigger than the other. Sorry, that's the kind of thing that you actually need to work through as you're answering B and other questions. So describe the forces on free body. Yeah, so I need to describe it. Like uh, imagine you are describing this figure to a blind person. That's uh, kind of what I'd recommend. So all uh, three free body diagrams for A, B, and C have um, gravitational force, M, A, G, M, B, G, and M, C, G, uh, respectively, on them. Um, in uh, the, on them uh, pointed downward. M, A also has F top, upward, and T1 downward, and B also has T1 upward and T2 downward. And C also has T2, T2 upward. Um, and uh, yeah, also indicate any forces that are equally magnet to each other. Um, so some forces are equal in magnitude because they are Basically, Newton's third law pairs. So T1 and, oh, or actually, I guess I <laughs> labeled them the same. So, okay. Um, what else are equal? Oh, I, I know. There's a one force that's equal to another force. That's this T2 
to MCG. So uh, I'll say T2 is equal to MCG. And uh, this is not because they are Newton's third law pairs. It's because they say acceleration is zero. So these two forces have to be equal to each other so that acceleration of block C is zero. And the rest of the diagrams, they got more than two forces on it. So uh, you can't just say T1 is equal to MBG. It's equal to some of these downward forces. Um, yeah, and I'll be attaching this as my part of the attached work. Okay, now it says find the tensions in the strings one and two as the three blocks hang at rest to so give your answer. And yeah. So this is where I have to go through the remainder of the standard strategy. Let me say, um, oh, uh, since my acceleration is zero, let me just define a, a one and the same axis for all of them. Um, so this will be my y. And this uh, upward direction will be my x or positive x. So with that, uh, since uh, all the forces are basically one dimensional, I don't have any components to break down. That's step number three. Step number four, I write down Newton's second law equations. So I have um, zero acceleration. So I'm going to write it for A, B, and C in order. So zero acceleration is equal to sum of all the forces. Upward force minus tension minus weight. Uh, it's already equal to zero. And technically, there's, you know, all divided by mass of the object, ma. Um, I, I guess I could write those out. So let me do that. Um, zero is equal to uh, T1 minus T2 minus mbg. And the technical for Newton's second law, divide by mass to get me this zero acceleration. Uh, for block C, uh, zero acceleration comes from these two forces cancelling out. T2 minus MCG divided by MC. Um, so, you know, the, you can imagine multiplying e each equation by uh, MA on both sides, MB on both sides, and MC on both sides. On the left hand side, the zeros are going to just remain zeros. These will get canceled out um, to basically give you these three equations that this is equal to zero, this is equal to zero, and this is equal to zero. So you stare at it for a bit. And um, and I especially when you're dealing with these many equations, I recommend being deliberate on each algebra you do. You can kind of look for the simplest looking equation to solve for first. The way I look at it, this is the simplest one. It has basically one unknown. I can solve for that. T2 is equal to MCG, Oh, which I would have guessed anyway. Now that I have this, I can eliminate T2 from my other equations. I can eliminate from here. I'm plugging in MCG and solve it for T1 to get me. T1 is equal to uh, this entire right hand side with a, or you know, these are moving over, so minus signs go away. So I have a, mcg plus mbg and plug in this t1 into here and that will give me an expression that i can solve for force and you'll find that when you do that the force applied at the top is sort of what you would have expected it to be the sum of the weight of the entire thing and you know if you had the intuition to say that this is the correct answer for the force applied at the top well, yeah, that, that's what intuition is. Intuition is basically knowing the correct answer without having to do the calculation. Uh, and uh, in scenarios where you don't have intuition, that's really what the uh, problem solving strategies we are teaching are for. Those are meant to help you navigate situations where your intuition doesn't tell you what the right answer is. Because, uh, you know, if you only know the right answer and you've already seen it, then that's uh, that's very limiting. So T two is M C G. Okay, tensions in strings one and two. Okay. Oh, oh, I guess they weren't even asking for this. All right, I got tensions in strings one and two. So tension in string one is actually greater because it's uh, um, you know having to hold up both the blocks B and C. Okay. Uh, let me see. Blocks is Hold from the bottom. Oh, um, 
Oh wow, <laughs> I gotta speed up. Um, let me do it this way. Um, I think I can copy over most of this. <laughs> and let me um, change it. And, uh, you know, if I weren't in a hurry to finish this up in even less than 20 minutes, I would uh, do more work uh, writing down here. Uh, but, you know, it, you know, they all have gravitational force. Uh, MA also has, okay, MA doesn't have this anymore. Also has a T1 downward. That's still correct. MB, surprisingly, nothing's changed. It both has two strings. MC also has a uh, T2 upward and uh, F bot uh, down. And um, oh, and they are not asking me which forces are equal to each other, so I won't bother with that. Okay, um, block C is pulled from the bottom uh, with a force so that the tension in string two remains, oh, same as that. All right. Um, so T2 is equal to MCG. Um, I feel like that's uh, one of those things where I have to rework this out. Okay, so let me do this. I'm going to just copy this over and kind of change the things that have to change. So I'm going to change this force here that's no longer there. And, um, and draw it here. I have F bot. I think that's it. Um, nothing in terms of free body diagram, surprisingly little changes. So, which also means in terms of the equations, surprisingly little changes. Uh, one thing I might uh, watch out for is so I'm gonna erase this, and I'm going to do the downward force of F bot here. Let me just uh, write this sign. Um, minus F bot. And because I'm reusing some of the di uh, stuff from before, when the upward direction for positive kind of made sense, I have to be careful here because all these objects are now accelerating downward in the um, negative x direction. So I need to be careful to say minus a is equal to that. So that's a place where someone could easily make a sign error. So I made sure I didn't do that. So. As I finish solving it, so um, this uh, introduced an, a new unknown uh, acceleration. That's why problem had to give you what the acceleration is. Um, they, wait, no, they didn't give, no, it introduced a new unknown acceleration. So they didn't give you that. That's why they had to give you this as unknown. So T2, before we are treating it as unknown, now we are treating it as known. So uh, looking at this here, I think if I'm imagining plugging this in here, that actually cancels this out. So I end up with a statement saying the bottom applied force is equal to MC times A. The minus signs having canceled out. Um, yeah. Uh, find the acceleration of the blocks and the tension in string one in terms of, oh, so I think I have to try to eliminate this force somehow. So, oh yeah, I remember this is potentially challenging. Let me write out uh, new versions of equations one and two. Equation two is, uh, so, um, and let me move MB over. So it's uh, MBA is equal to, I'm gonna plug this in as we go. So T1 minus MCG minus MBG. Um, okay, let me write down a new version of equation one. I have MA times A is equal to uh, T1 plus MAG. All right. So let me just do a quick uh, inventory here. I have uh, three equations, one, two, three. And I have, uh, I don't know the acceleration that I need to solve for. I don't know the tension that I need to solve for. Uh, and I don't know the apply the force at the bottom that, um, that I guess I do need to solve for somewhere, but they don't actually ask. They only ask for, acceleration and the tension in string one. So I'm gonna uh, prioritize that. Um, 
which means I think I can actually ignore this equation entirely. It just introduces one new unknown and that I don't want anyway. So I think I can just look at this and solve this for a tension and acceleration. Thank you. Yeah, what is this? Um, yeah, I, I don't know what. <laughs> I wasted time with that for no reason. Okay, so uh, let me just do this here. Um, so I'm going to solve this for acceleration. And plug it in to get mb divided by ma times T1 plus MAG is equal to T1 minus MCG minus MBG. Uh, collect like terms with the T1. So I'm going to collect it on the right hand and imagine moving it over. So it'll be 1 there minus the thing I moved over, MB over MA. And then the rest on the left hand side that I'm writing on right. So MBG. MA cancelled out, and I have a plus MBG, so 2 MBG, I hope I didn't make a mistake, and then plus MCG, um, so tension 1 is equal to 2 MBG plus MCG divided by 1 minus mb over ma. And there are uh, things I can do to clear this up. I um, feel like I might have made a mistake somewhere. Because uh, there's a possibility for tension to be negative. I don't like that. Um, <laughs> I uh, underestimated this question. Um, so t1 is equal to um, 2mbg plus m, and this is what I would recommend if you are noting something like um, what I see now. Um, that because uh, really the point of the answers here is it separates what the work you do in the twenty minute time limit from the work that you might do after. So I'll note uh, something here. Um, the expression suggests uh, t1 could be negative, which means that there might have been an algebra mistake. And I'll, uh, if I were actually doing this question, I would uh, look for the mistake after the time limit runs out. And acceleration, I'll just uh, copy this down so that I have a response. Acceleration is T1 plus MAG divided by MA plug in T1 from above. Something like this is perfectly fine. Um, and, oh wow, this question is long. Um, in the future semesters, I might consider taking this part out because uh, I'm obviously running out of the 20 minute time limit here. Um, do I have enough time to do that? Let's see. So nothing in my equations need to change. Um, tension in string one is same as in B above. So that's telling me um, T1 is equal to that. Okay. Um, oh, by the way, as I'm running out of time, I'm going to save progress so that uh, some of the things I've entered, they are in the system. I'm going to get kicked out. Um, so uh, go through the same equations as D, um, plug in T1 above and uh, solve for T2 as an unknown. Um, <laughs> where I'm going to leave it. Uh, this question is definitely too long. So if you get this question as you're doing it, do your best. I don't think I can change this question mid-semester, um, but I will consider taking this out uh, or, uh, you know, taking out part E or making it a little bit shorter. Um, well, I was wasting a lot of time. Um, it's also, it is a long question. 
So um, in terms of work, so by the way, what I do now isn't what I would recommend for you, uh, especially uh, for questions where you didn't quite finish everything. I would actually recommend that you, you know, continue working on it. You can spend additional time. Oh, I guess I just do that. Um, you know, do, do, don't do it too close to the due time because then sometimes they kick you out of the uh, save work thing. Um, but um, you do get some credit for figuring out uh, what you might have missed within the time limit. Uh, some, not 100% credit. So uh, what I'm doing now in the interest of ending this session um, is not what I would recommend that you do. Uh, you should organize your work. If you can try to figure out what you didn't quite get within the time limit and uh, uh, kind of so, you know, if it takes you like an additional hour to do this part, that wouldn't be all that surprising. Not that you should, that, not that you should aim to spend an hour, but like an hour of time spent organizing work, that's, uh, that's not out of reason. So I'm not doing it for now, so let me just do that. So uh, it'll always say scores at zero. It's because it's manually graded. Uh, I, none of these, um, some of them might have solutions written for it. Uh, many of them actually don't. I have a solution elsewhere that I haven't had the time to program in yet. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and uh, I'll have to refer to my own solution to figure out uh, what mistake I've made here. Yeah, I might make a video for this question separately.